Right now on 12 on Health, frightening study findings on melanoma and insight on this deadly form of skin cancer from a top dermatologist. Plus, what your child needs from preschool and what you can do at home to make sure your child thrives. And the latest data on red meat. This is 12 on Health with Gillian Neff. Everyone. Welcome to this edition of 12 on Health. We begin today by covering what preschoolers need. This past week was designated the week of the young child, which sounds kind of funny. I always think every day is the day of the young child, but it's all about ensuring little ones get the developmental help they need to thrive. Family centers in Greenwich celebrated by having special events for children and their parents like Bubble Day. Organizers say events like these actually serve an important purpose. On that note, we have Kate McCallum here now. She is the site manager for Family Center's Arch Street Preschool, which, by the way, has a major effort underway to raise money to help pay the way for families who cannot afford preschool tuition. Thanks yeah. for being here. Thanks for having me. Whenever I come to your site, I am blown away by how you guys connect with the kids. It's not what some folks might think. You drop the kids off and it's babysitter land. No, it's not. I actually take offense when people say it's daycare because it's preschool. Um, we're actually connecting with the children, as you said. The teachers are down on their level. They're, they're teaching them academics and social, emotional competencies. Everything that you need to succeed as an adult, they're learning starting in preschool. And what it, when we see a kid playing, we have mm -hmm. video of them at your preschool. When we see them playing, is there a method to it? What are your teachers, what, have, what are the folks they are thinking when they're dealing with the child? What are their goals? Well, we try to really ask open-ended questions um, because that allows for the children to, to figure things out on their own as opposed to teachers just feeding them information. So you might see teachers um, working one-on-one -on -one with children, um, just engaging side-by-side -side in play, or extending their learning through play by saying, oh, I wonder what would happen if. Ah. And that allows the children to, to have their own ideas. Yes, let them connect the dots, mm -hmm. maybe think of a concept that wasn't planted by the teacher. Exactly. Um, when you, parents come to you and they say, well, what can I do at home to help the momentum here? Mm -hmm. What do you suggest? Um, number one, reading with your child. Um, children need to learn that um, the world isn't just what they see. It helps with their imaginations. It helps with their language. Um, by age four, there's a 32 million word gap between um, children of um, high-income families and children who are from less advantaged families. Okay. Um, so reading with your child and having them hear all of those different words in your voice intonation um, really helps them um, to to grow. So make that a squeeze it in somehow, some way. Absolutely. Also setting limits and. Um, having consequences for negative behaviors is very good because that helps the children to learn to self-regulate on their own. Oh, I like that. Now with reading, I understand, um, somebody taught me this and it came in very handy, pause after a page and chat about it. You know, linger on a page. I hadn't thought of that. I thought the goal was to get through the book, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I remember when I was little, um, I, I would tell my mom when she missed a page on something because she'd skip out on me. Um, but yeah, it's really important to let the children talk about what they remember from the story. It's great to read stories over and over again. Sometimes um, children will want to make up their own version of a story and that's great too. Oh, that's a great idea. I like mm -hmm. that. Get their little minds going. Yep. Um, so what are we, if, I know you don't like to criticize, but if you were to criticize parents um, just generally, what are we doing wrong? A couple of things, pitfalls we fall into. I think um, the number one thing nowadays is that parents don't have a lot of time with children, and I think that goes, you know, because of our economy, so many more parents are working, working longer hours, more jobs. But it's so important for children to have face-to-face -face time with adults mm -hmm. as opposed to with 
some kind of technology. Yes. Um, so I, if we're feeling rushed and feeling like yeah. time crunch, we should try not to let them feel it too. Yeah, absolutely. It's so important for children to know that you physically and mentally, emotionally, that you're there for them. Ah, put the cell phone somewhere else. Yeah. Okay. Um, tell me quickly about this effort by Bill Brucker, your communications director. Mm -hmm. He is doing a marathon, raising money, mm -hmm. um, and by doing this, he will raise money to help how? He will be helping um, our families who can't otherwise afford um, to pay for their child care. So it'll go towards scholarships for our families who need help to pay, which is great because so many of our families need scholarship. About 98% of the families and, and family centers who attend our early care and education program are on some form of scholarship. So Bill Brucker will be running the Vermont City Marathon? Yeah, Memorial Day weekend. Okay, I know he's training. Yes. He said he had like tw <laughs> 15 miles to do or something recently, and I know yes. the eventual marathon is 26.2. Correct. So, That's a lot. Uh, good luck to him. Yes, we're very thankful. <laughs> it's a noble endeavor for sure. Yeah. Thank you so much, Kate. Thank you. We have a break here, but when we come back, we will be talking about red meat. I know you don't want to hear it, red meat lovers, and you won't like this new data.